What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Ryan Myers Expeditions. Today, we're back here with Matt. We're in his monster truck and we're going somewhere really, really cool. We've been crawling across like this lava moon-like landscape for a while now and we're not gonna get to where we're going at dark till dark, but the plan is we're gonna jump in and we're gonna see what we can get for lobster. We've got one more day left in the season. The following lobstering footage was all filmed on April 29th, 2020. Lobster season in Hawaii is from September 1st to April 30th, or better to remember, all months that have the letter R. This also includes slipper lobster and Kona crab. Please remember that lobster regulations vary state to state and also country to country, and to always check on your local regulations before fishing and hunting. Please also be advised that our videos are usually released a few weeks after original filming because our editor has a life other than just sitting at the computer making YouTubes, even if she may feel like that's all she does. This is our last chance until the end of the summer, so we're going to go out here, we're going to see what happens. Matt's going to bring his three prong, he's going to see if he can't shoot some big moose, some goats, who knows. What else are we going to see out there? <clears throat> Only time will tell, but uh, we're looking for some good fish. Maybe make some ceviche tomorrow, put a lobster on the grill, get a risotto, which I know Ryan guy has been yeah. picking up lately. Good stuff. For sure, so check this road out guys. Guys, like I've said over and over and over, you guys have heard me say this, go the extra mile. Get off that beaten path as much as you can, however you've got to do it. If you got the truck, if you got to walk, if you got to swim, you got to get on a boat, whatever you can do to get a little bit further away from everywhere else, always, always is worth it. So what's pretty sick here, guys, is actually leave a trail of the white rocks and that kind of shows you how to go along. You can see right here, because otherwise it looks like just rubble everywhere. Popping out. Scout it out to see what the best route here is. You're building a road. Not coming home tonight. No way you get over this in the dark. No way you get over this in the light. Guys, that was insane. I didn't even know that was possible. All right, guys, so we just parked the truck. I didn't think we were coming camping tonight, but apparently we are going camping tonight. We're gonna chill for a little bit, wait till it gets a little bit darker. We're gonna hike way down the cliff. We're gonna jump in down there, and we're gonna see what we can find. Hopefully we cross some lobster tonight. Damn, dude. Full on kerosene lantern, or what is that? It's a straight, unleaded, E-free gas dual fuel lantern. What? Ethanol free gas burns very clean, very hot. It's a lot cheaper than Coleman fuel or kerosene or any of that. That's that's gasoline? Straight gas. <laughs> this here is a bomb, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Don't drop it. Guys, so apparently he knew we were camping tonight. He just didn't tell me. He missed the part that I have the sleeping bags in the truck. <laughs> we have mines that are like, so we might be crawling out of the water at four o'clock. You that, just never that know. Is, that, is, that was at my that, plan. At that point, I'm tired. I yeah. don't drive. No, you're, curl up in a you're exactly right. My plan is completely was 4 a.m. to get out. So you're right. All right, guys. I got that traditional Hawaiian shoe on again. No, that means we have a mission. So we're fully suited up now. We got about, I don't know, a mile, mile and a half walk. Again, we're trying to get so far off the beaten path as far as we can. That's where the lobsters are gonna be. So we got a long hike ahead of us and then we'll actually see you in the water. So right when I jumped off the rocks, this is basically what I landed on. And I knew this was an unbelievable sign for things to come and that tonight was sure to be epic. I grabbed that bug and Matt stoned this big, beautiful moo and we were off immediately crushing fish and lobster. One of the coolest things about going out at night is seeing things that you absolutely never see during the day. I mean, I dive out here in Kona a lot and I never see squid. So that's pretty awesome. Matt quickly speared this one, 
grabbed him, put him on his cooey, was ready to take him home and eat him. Slipper lobster are another one of these targets that we target out here while we're lobstering at night. They only come out here at night and I think they taste way, way better. This big crazy looking thing is the 7-Eleven crab. Now, I had actually the night before, a couple nights before, just gotten a couple of these and we did a catch and cook with these. That video will be out here eventually. And I kind of decided that I was gonna let the rest of these go. Um, I didn't think they were as impressive as some of the other things that I could find at night, but Matt grabbed this one and it was pretty sick. This was a conger eel that Matt was looking for all night long. He was like, Ryan, look for conger eels because he uses them for bait for the alua fishing. Guys, if you wanna see that alua fishing, I did a video with Matt. It was pretty epic and we're using eels just like this for bait. So the whole strategy here was to not cover ground too fast. Cause you know, we only had a certain amount of territory to cover because we hiked down and then we were gonna get out at our campsite. And so what we did was me and, me and Matt kind of zigzagged back and forth and one of us might take the shallower zone and one of us might take the little bit deeper zone. And what we found throughout the night was that the lobsters were so shallow. Now, I'm fairly new at this, so I don't know where they are kind of usually, but we found them in like a foot of water. Like I found a lot of them in like a foot, two feet, five feet, right against the shoreline. Now, I don't know if that had to do with the moon or what it was, but it was pretty awesome. So I would kind of let the surge take me back and forth. And then as soon as I saw one, I would drop my bag and I would launch after it and I would try to grab it. And then if I got it or if I didn't, then I'd go back and I'd grab my bag. There were a lot of lobsters out tonight. Like you could see right here, there were two at the top of this rock just sitting there. And this one had eggs and we found a shocking number of them that had eggs. I mean. I don't even know. I released maybe 15, 20, 30 that had eggs. There were small ones like right there. There were little ones. There were females. There were just bugs out everywhere. So it was really cool to just kind of be selective, take the males, let the little ones like this go, and let those eggers and the females go as well. Sometimes we found them and they were up high on the rocks and sometimes they were way down like this. And if they were way down here like this, a lot of times they got away. And we were kind of doing so well that it wasn't, it wasn't really a big deal. But it was just a sick, sick night of hunting. Uh, me and Matt working together, kind of trying to cover our own zones. And you can see there, I'm flashing the light at him. That means that I see one. And we would kind of help each other out like that. You know, I'd, I'd spot one for him, he'd spot one for me. It's unbelievably hard to film at night. You know, they, it's just so difficult. And even like here, you can see the lobster down there in the hole and Matt goes down to try to get it, but you know, doesn't quite make it happen. It's, it's tough enough to lobster and interact and kind of do stuff at night and to try and film is, is just super hard. So I was stoked with the footage that I got here. Me and Matt were just having an absolute blast out here though. I was trying to film him. You can see real casual, swims down, plucks this guy off the rock. You can see he didn't even drop his bag. Like keeps that bag in his hand. He's got his light there, got all his stuff, throws it right on his leg and lets it kind of latch onto his wetsuit so he doesn't lose it, doesn't have a chance of getting away. Matt's an expert out here. You know, I'm still learning this whole nighttime lobster thing, but he's got these really cool bags where watch, he'll squeeze the handle and it'll open up for him. And he'll kind of move it upward so the other ones don't get out and shove it right in there and have lobsters in the bag. I went after this, I filmed this, I grabbed it. You can see the first thing I do is flip up its tail and that's the easiest way to check whether it's a male or a female and kind of decide whether you're gonna keep it or let it go. Out here in Hawaii, we're only allowed to keep the males and we try to respect that. So right after I grab the bug, I go back and I try to look for the bag. And you try really hard not to lose it. I mean, it's dark out there, we put glow sticks on them, but still, it's, anything could happen out there. From there, me and Matt just had a blast and we had action all night long. I mean, I think we got in the water at like nine o'clock and we didn't get out until 4 a.m. So towards the end of the night, I was really trying to get some film. You know, we had a bunch of bugs, I didn't need any more, but I was trying to get some film of Matt in action. And I followed him for a few minutes, and you can see he's searching with his little light, he's looking along, and then he found this monster. And went down, grabbed it real nice and casual, had this thing in his freaking arms, and the thing was a stud. This was the lobster of the night right here, guys. Look at those legs. Puts it right against him so that it doesn't have a chance of flopping away. You know, that's definitely a mistake I've made a couple times now that when I grab them, I don't push them against me and then their tails are so, so powerful out here in the Pacific that they can actually kick out of my hands and I lose them. Catching one of these giants is one thing, but then you've got to get it into that bag. 
and that big alien looking thing does not want to go in that bag. So Matt's got a really cool system where he kind of like holds it up out of the water so the other ones don't kick out. It was pretty sick. It was awesome to watch Matt work. He's done this since he was just a little kid out here in Hawaii. And it was just such a rad, rad experience to get out here and really find the lobsters for once in my life. I mean, I've done this a lot, but I've never quite found grounds like this. I've never seen this much action in one night. So that was an epic, epic night dive. Like we have a serious haul of lobsters. This is camp for the night right there. I don't know if you can see that, but we basically just got some sleeping pads, some sleeping bags. It's like 3 a.m. right now, we're gonna go to sleep. And tomorrow when I get home, I'm gonna show you guys what we caught. Well, good morning, guys. Slept like a baby out there on the rocks. We're gonna rock crawl on out of here, take these lobster home. What a freaking trip, guys. That was incredible. We crushed them. I mean, that was, a, that was awesome. We got a huge collection of awesome, big giant bugs here. Check this out. Back here, after catching all these bugs tonight, all I did was have them sitting kind of in the cooler with a little bit of salt water I kept pouring over them to keep them alive. Now, you can see they're still cruising. They're, they're completely alive. Big, beautiful male there. You can tell by the, the swimmerettes how they only have one segment of them. You can tell by the back leg here too that they don't have a, a wide one. It's only just a single, it's not a pincher. The, the females all have little grabbers in the back on their back legs. So all I'm doing here, take my knife, cutting up a little bit their stomach, twist, pop that right out. Taking the antenna from the top, Cleaning out the poop chute here. See it comes out real nice and easy. All gets thrown away. Gets a quick rinse for any guts. I'm good to go. So after I do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and pop all these legs off. I'm gonna pop all these legs off because they still have a lot of meat in them. And we'll go in right now and we'll actually cook these up. These are gonna be awesome. And then so these couple bigger ones I have, the last part of the meat really is these knuckles up here. And if I cook these whole, you can kind of get this meat out and it's kind of a big, beautiful chunk of meat right there in the top of the head. And that's mostly it. I mean, you could make stock out of these, you could grab a little bit more out of the kind of leg joints, but it's pretty tough from here. So these slipper lobsters are even easier. Again, a real quick little slice right there up against the belly, it gets twisted, and that's it. These are delicious. This is one of the best things to come out of the ocean. Hey all you cool cats and kittens. Do I have a treat for you today. Ladies, have you been stuck in a small studio apartment with your boyfriend or husband for the past four weeks during a coronavirus quarantine? Are you sick and tired of all the dumb ass shit he has to say on a daily basis? Well, you're in luck, ladies, because today I'm gonna teach you how to make your very own sardine oil to cover your husband up in and feed him to your pet tigers. Stay tuned. I'm totally kidding, I'm not making sardine oil. The other night, Ryan went lobstering and brought home way too much lobster. My freezer is stacked, so we decided to have like an epic sushi party for my upstairs neighbors. We're gonna be making some type of lobster roll. We also are gonna go and get some fish. We're gonna show you the best way to catch your own ono and tuna, and the best way to make your very own sushi rice. Now, sushi rice can be really, really complicated, but we have mastered the technique. Follow along, check it out. Without a doubt, the easiest and cheapest way to get yourself a sushi grade block of ahi is to go visit your local grocery store and go buy one. After you've got your fish, you need to make your rice, and the easiest way to do that is to visit your local sushi restaurant. Thanks, guys! 
All right, guys, so what's so, so cool about Hawaii is you can just drive up and buy fish on the side of the road. This will be like kind of like our final ingredient. You know, we've already got the ahi, we've already got the rice. What's up, guys? You got some fresh ono? Oh. Sweet. Turns out these guys are subscribers. What are your names? Leighton. I'm Polkala. Leighton Polkala. How'd you catch this? Uh, yesterday we went out, spent uh, probably about 10 hours looking for ono. Sweet. How many did you get? Good. We got uh, nine. Nine? Yeah. Damn. See, this, like I was saying, guys, easiest way to catch an ono, stop on the side of the road, buy it, go to KTA, get your ahi there, make your sushi rice, sushi restaurant, easiest cake. They got a YouTube channel too. I'm stoked to go check it out. It's QSS, Quick Shot Spearfishing. All right, guys, we'll link that down below, Quick Shot Spearfishing. Check that out. Nice ono block. Sweet. To be honest, making sushi rice is definitely a fine art when it comes to cooking. I think it takes a lot of practice and you have to really, really know what you're doing. There's lots of recipes online, and to be honest, these recipes do work fine if you're, for, say, like on a deserted island or living on a boat, which we have been in both of those situations and made sushi rice that way, and it was okay. But honestly, the easiest and the best way that you're gonna get sushi rice is just to buy it at your local sushi restaurant. I think we got three cups today for $10. Super easy, tastes good, sticky like it's supposed to be. Honestly, that's the best scenario that I've ever dealt with while making sushi. But if you think this is crazy, if sushi rice really isn't that hard, I'm just learning how to cook, I don't know what I'm doing, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear your tips and tricks. All right guys, so we got our lobster, we got our ahi, we got our ono, we got our rice, and we are ready to start prepping all the ingredients and then get rolling. The cool thing about making sushi is that you can be as creative as you want with it. We're literally gonna fry up lobster to put in the middle of our rolls. We're gonna be using avocado, cream cheese, mango, asparagus, cucumber. We have a lot of cool stuff going in our rolls, but you can kinda do whatever you want. Catch your cukes. Seed your cukes. We wanna keep them long, right? Cause sushi rolls are long, so we're gonna cut little sticks. We have a couple of vegetarian type people to feed. Now, don't know how to do this, but we're gonna try. I'm gonna try to fry asparagus. These are some good neighbors that we obviously really like. The best part of sushi is the flavoring. So whatever we're gonna add to it to make it taste really, really good and different from what you normally eat. So I'm making homemade eel sauce. Super easy, equal parts mirin, soy sauce, and sugar. Meanwhile, the lobster is cruising along, getting steamed before we fry it up. All that needs to happen is they're just cooked a little tiny bit so I can get the meat out of the shell, chop it up, and then batter and fry them. Now I'm gonna split them, I'm gonna chop them up, and I'm gonna bread them, fry them. It's gonna be incredible. I don't even wanna put them in rolls, guys. I just wanna eat them. Not cooked, looking perfect, just what I wanted. Just enough to get them out of the shell. See the color difference here? That's because this one was getting ready to molt. This one's got like a lot of skin. Like this skin is hard. Actually, I might be able to get it off. If I can get it off, I'm gonna try for sure. But this is gonna be the shell. See that? So I made spicy mayo. It's just sriracha and mayo, but I also put in garlic and lemon. This is the eel sauce. So once it's done reducing, you can transfer it to a bowl so it can pull off. A strip of lobster there. Somehow I tricked Sam into doing the dirty work. This is the worst, look at my fingertips. Justin does it with chopsticks. Yeah, well Justin's smarter than us. So basically what we have going on here is like a flour to egg to tempura, some kind of ratio there. We're not scientific about it. Sometimes I do more times back and forth than others. I think the more you do it, the more crust you get. I don't know, I'm new to this whole frying thing. We're learning. I found white people chopsticks. Check that out guys, that looks amazing. That is that fried lobster. Okay, what did you just say about the lobster? I said this is the only way we're eating lobster from now on guys. Look at this. You know that delicious crunch that you get on top of your roll? Well that's what I'm creating right here. All I've got is got some oil in here and I've poured the panko in there and I'm just making them nice and golden brown. And then I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna try not to die. Now I'm sure there's a better tool to do that. However, I don't have it. Okay, so before we roll with the nori, we like to toast it. To make the roll, first thing you gotta do is you gotta make sure that the rough side of the nori is facing up. 
you're gonna wet your hands, like soak your hands in the water. That's what keeps the rice from sticking to your hands. You're gonna make like a baseball sized piece of rice and then you're just gonna start spreading it as evenly as you can onto your nori. This is the most fun part. You guys can put whatever the heck you wanted. I decided to make a little lobster mango roll. When you're ready to roll, ideally you want one of those cool bamboo rolling mats. I don't have one, so I'm just kind of using a Ziploc bag. But the idea is that it just helps me to tighten it and it doesn't stick to it. I want to try and keep all of our good stuff in there. I'm just eating fried lobster. This is it. I'm done. Guys, I'm done. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. You guys may think that we're actually like really nice people. In reality, I left a three pound lobster head in the trash and it stunk up the entire rental building, guys. It was ridiculous. No one could go outside for three days. So this is sort of our apology to them. I think they made out like a bandit personally. All right guys, so I chopped up that Ono from our buddies. Check this out. Okay, this is the second best part because this is the part right before you get to eat. Step one, when you're cutting, you want the knife to be wet. I have a little cup of water here. This keeps the rice from sticking and the rolls from sticking. You're gonna cut it right in half. I keep dipping my knife in the water. It's gotta be really wet, so just keep doing that. You're gonna cut each section in half again. Easy. And then you're gonna cut each section in half one more time. Oh my God. It's a perfect size little sushi roll. And you'll get eight little rolls out of each. Rolls, eight little pieces. Ah, it's falling apart. Remember guys, broken sushi still tastes good. All right guys, so I told Sam not to make upside down rolls. They are borderline impossible. They came out so good. She did it. I'm so thrilled. <laughs> Expert level sushi making right here. I think my favorite part is the plating. I got really ambitious and I basically made a sushi burrito. So this is the Ryan suggestion, which is lobster and ahi. Just let them fall apart because I'm gonna eat them all. Look at that. It looks really, really good. Sam and Graham ferociously chopping away. I got fresh edamame out of the pot. Check that out. These are the tempura just tempura flakes that Ryan made earlier. Gives some of the softer rolls a little more crunch. This is eel sauce drizzles. All those extra flavors that you don't normally get whenever you eat your day-to-day -day meals, that's kind of what you get in sushi. So the spicy mayo, the eel sauce, really gonna give these things their flavor. Check this out guys, everybody ooh and ah. <laughs> What do we got, Sam? We have a little bit of everything. Each roll is different. I have no idea what I did. These are all vegetarian. <laughs> These all have lobster or tuna in them. This is Ono Sashimi, lobster bites, edamame. We have the works tonight. Oh, this is so exciting, guys. This looks amazing. Okay, I need to hear how they are. I'm open to constructive criticism because I'm so excited. Honestly, a lot of these were experimental. <laughs> By a lot, she means all. I mean, I feel like I had some practice the other night. We made some lobster rolls the other night. They were good, but the vegetarian rolls are all experimental. Restaurant quality. This is amazing. <laughs> well, guys, that was an unbelievable sushi night. I am fat and happy. We devoured that. Pie has appeared, so we're going to eat that now. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, let us know down in the comments below. Smash that like button if you haven't already, and subscribe because we have so much more coming for you on Ryan Myers Expeditions.